Okay. Thank you, Amin. Okay, so um, today by request, someone asked that we should do Kapitel Chav Gimel 23, probably one of the most famous of all Kapitel Chav Tehillim. Interestingly, both in the Jewish world and in the um, and in the non-Jewish world, this is um, one of the most famous chapters of, of Tehillim. Short chapter, most of us know at least parts of it um, by heart, and so it's nice to see it um, inside and to get a little bit of a, a deeper understanding. Um, it's one of those kapitlach of Tehillim, I'm sure that there are many like that, um, that we could study it, just this chapter, for the year. <laughs> Like it's got, it's got so many, many, many layers of, um, you know, of of, uh, of depth in this capital. But today we'll get just, a, um, we'll get just a, a little bit, a taste, um, a taste of the, um, of the depth of this capital of Tehillim. Um, so this capital um, of Tehillim was written by David Hamelach when he was running away from. Um, King Shaul, um, as he did many times, but in this particular time, Hashem made a huge miracle for him. He was in a dry forest, um, actually called a, a wilderness, um, and Hashem made it, like it come alive so that there was water and fruit and food, and so that he was not only taken care of. Um, <laughs> just taken care of, but taken care of beautifully, comfortably, um, while he was still afraid, he still had everything that he that he needed. Um, and it says that this capital of Tehillim is the one that teaches us um, that Hashem takes care, he looks, he looks after us, um, and that even when things seem impossible, even when things seem like um, it, that help is just non-existent, can't really happen, um, then this, uh, this capital, we should say it, and it will give us faith, it will give us, um, it will give us trust, and it um, will help us to continue. This um, capital of Tehillim, according the, by the Zohar, is called um, the Psalm of Parnassa. So um, that's how the Zohar refers to it. Um, Sorry, and, yeah. What number is it, please? 23. Thank you. Um, and so it's called the it's called the Psalm of Parnassa. Um, and in fact, um, amongst Sephardic Jews, there is a custom to say this capital to Hillim after you've washed your hands for eating bread and before making hamaytzi. Um, this capital would be would be said. Um, and that Rizal explains. He says that if you count the words in this um, in this um, chapter, there are fifty seven words, um, and fifty seven. Nun and a Zion is the word Zan, which means food, nourishes. Um, he says also that if you count the letters, there are 227 letters in this, which is the gematria, the numerical value of the word bracha, blessing. Um, and so this is the capital of Tehillim that provides blessing for nourishment. Um, it, also, the Arizal writes that someone who says this capital and believes what they're saying will always be blessed with enough plenty, with enough provisions, and with everything um, with everything that they need. So it's a very powerful um, chapter of, of Tehillim, short and, and very powerful. Um, we also know about this capital of Tehillim that um, if we say this chapter of Tehillim when we are scared, it says that the actual verbalizing, saying the words of this chapter, takes away, uh, removes fear. Um, so if you're ever in a situation that you're scared of something, um, saying this chapter of Tehillim is like the one that you should pull out, you should say it, and possibly even you should know it by heart and say it, because this capital of Tehillim will calm you and will remove some of the fear that you that you are feeling. So let's look at the chapter itself and see what it um, what it says. Uh, so also custom to say this capital of Tehillim three times on Shabbos. Um, Chabad, Chabad have the custom to say it once before each meal. Ashkenazi world says it three times at Shalashudas um, at, at the Shalashudas time. So let's look into the um, chapter itself, and it begins, Mizmer of David, a song um, by David, Hashem Rei Le'echzar, Hashem is my shepherd, and I shall not want. So you remember when it says that some kapitlach begin Mizmer of David, and some begin Le David Mizmer. So when we see Mizmer Le David, a uh, song, uh, song for David, so what happens then is that David Amelach begins to sing. He begins to, um, he begins the tune. He begins 
putting himself in the mood. Um, and Hashem then comes to him, Shekhinah rests on his shoulders. And so the capital, the chapter of Tehillim is born. When it does it the other way around, Le David Mizmor means that Hashem, that Hashem first comes to David and then only he is able to, um, he is able to um, be inspired, be, um, be motivated. So he, he starts and then, and then Hashem helps him. In this case, Mizmer to David, David starts and then Hashem um, comes, to, comes to him the other, the other way around. Um, and he says, Hashem Rei, Hashem is my shepherd, Echsa, um, I shall not want. What does it mean that Hashem is, Hashem is his shepherd? That, um, so it's written, David is the shepherd of the Jewish people and Hashem is the shepherd of, um, of David. What is the job of, um, of a shepherd? And the Talmud tells us that, that a shepherd was always the way that Hashem tested any leader of the Jewish people. So you know um, that Moshe Rabbeinu, he had to shepherd sheep in the desert, and only when he went and he found a lost sheep and he picked it up and he apologized to it and brought it back, then Hashem said, you're ready now to be the leader of the Jewish people. David HaMelech was a shepherd, a um, very famous story told in, in the Gemara of how he gave his sheep to eat. It says that he would open the gate for the sheep to come into the field um, slowly. And first he would let the baby sheep come in, his teeth were not so strong, and they would come in first and they would be able to eat the grass that was on the top, easy, easily accessible. Then he would let the next love sheep whose teeth were a bit stronger and um, they would come in and, and have a harder time getting, um, getting food, but they were still able. And then he would take the, the grown up sheep, the one who had strong muscles, strong jaws, strong teeth, and they would come in and have to eat from the grass that like pull out the roots or whatever it is they had to do to get their food. And Hashem said to him, you've shown care, you've shown thought for each of the sheep, now you are ready to look after, to be the leader of my sheep. And that's when David became um, the leader of, of um, the Jewish people. It was so important to David Amelach that he was a shepherd first, that when he did become king, he coined, he minted a coin of um, himself. Um, on the one side was him as a shepherd, and on the other side was Migdal David, the, the towers of David, um, him, as, him as king. But he never forgot the fact that his pathway to becoming a leader of the Jewish people was by being a shepherd um, first. And actually, if you go back and you look in history, many of the great, great people chose to be shepherds as their way of getting Parnassa. Um, so we see that all the way back, Yaakov's sons were shepherds. We see it in much more recent times. Um, the Baal Shem Tov was a was a shepherd. And why did Dafka choose the work of being a shepherd? Is because a shepherd can make a panel, so they can make a living. At the same time, they have plenty of time making that while they're making their living to be studying Torah, being involved with learning and such, because they have to get the sheep there in the morning, then they can watch the sheep all day. Um, they got to keep an eye on the sheep, but during the time that they're sitting there, um, they didn't have um, computers and cell phones, so they couldn't be playing on social media. Um, and so they would spend a lot of that time studying, learning, learning um, Torah. Um, the question is always asked is, is this a good way to serve Hashem? By, um, by being a shepherd. And actually, Chassidus explains to us that it's not the best way to serve Hashem. Um, the best way to serve Hashem is to live in the world, to be distracted by worldly things and still be able to serve Hashem. Um, but it's definitely a first way. The, the initial way of serving Hashem, finding a way to make yourself time while you still um, accomplish the other things that you need to, um, that you need to accomplish. But we, it's, it's not ideal to... Um, uninvolve yourself from um, from uh, the world in order to in order to serve Hashem, um, and so um, David Amalek, um says, um, Hashem is my shepherd, and if Hashem is my shepherd, Echsa, I'm I'm not missing anything. I don't I don't need anything. So immediately the commentaries point out to us that a sheep relies on the shepherd absolutely and completely. The sheep doesn't think for itself, like, is this a good place that we're coming to, um, to eat today? Is there gonna be enough water? Do you think that a wolf is gonna come and try? The sheep doesn't think about anything. 
all the sheep does is that it's being taken into a place where there's food and it eats and that's all and when it needs to drink it drinks doesn't have any worries doesn't feel any responsibility doesn't feel anything why because it has a shepherd that brought it there and they're going to do whatever the shepherd um whatever the shepherd tells them um shows them brings them um to do and says that this is actually what our relationship with Hashem should be that we trust Hashem absolutely and completely wherever he takes us whatever he does with us we should be able to we should be trying to bring ourselves to a level that we can feel and that we're going to see this theme going throughout this chapter but that we can feel this is exactly what Hashem wants me to be doing right now this is exactly where Hashem wants me right now this is how he wants me um, to be to be right now on a more his, historical um, level, the commentaries say that this is talking about the Jewish people in the in the desert. That for forty years in the desert, they followed Hashem. Um, they didn't have to think for themselves, and Hashem just looked after them. Um, and Rabbi Huda says in the name of Rabbi Lazar, um, normally when people are traveling, there are three things that they don't have as much as when they're at home. So, firstly, they um, they are exhausted, right? They like traveling. Even if you're going on holiday, it's the actual traveling itself is exhausting, right? You don't have everything. You don't have um, all the food that you used to. You don't have all the luxuries that you that you used to. Um, you don't have your bed, you don't have your bathroom, right? So there's certain things that you give up um, when, you, when you're traveling. And says so that when the Yidden were in the desert, they had everything they needed. Although they were traveling and they were traveling through a desert, they had the, the, the um, clouds around them, keeping them absolutely comfortable. They had the man um, that they could eat, whatever they, um, whatever they wanted. Um, they were never tired. They, they like every, every single thing that they could possibly want, um, they had. And this is, Hashem is my shepherd. He was looking after us. And even though we were in a situation that we should have, should have been a struggle, should have been difficult for us, we, we missed nothing. We missed nothing at all. In fact, the Gemara goes on and says that when a person welcomes guests into their homes, first day, he serves them fat calves. The second day, he serves them sheep. On the third day, he gives them chicken. On the fourth day, he gives them beans. And eventually they go home. Um, and um, so Gemara, Gemara tells us and says, but the Jews in the desert, from the first day until the last day, Hashem looked after them. And the more they moaned, Hashem gave them even more until finally he gave them the man, which meant that they could have anything they wanted, any time they wanted. Hashem Rei, when Hashem is our shepherd, like Exa, we miss absolutely, absolutely um, nothing, nothing at all. And the final level of understanding this concept of Hashem Rei Le'echsa, Hashem is my shepherd, um, and I'm not missing anything. Le'echsa, I shall not, I shall not want. Um, so the commentaries that this is talking about how we are supposed to be feeling. Um, a person has to bring themselves to the level that they not necessarily they have everything, but they realize that they're not missing anything. Whatever I have is what I need in order to accomplish what I need to accomplish in this world. And if I don't have something, it's because Hashem knows that I personally don't need it in order to accomplish my mission in this in this world. And that's what we're supposed to be striving to, to feel that, right? To feel this um, absolute satisfaction with what, with what we have. Our avas, Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov were blessed. That the big part of their blessing is that they had the blessing of what we call kol, everything. In other words, each of our avas were blessed, as it says, Hashem Beirach has Avraham, Hashem blessed Avraham bakol with everything. And about Yitzhak, it says, that Yitzhak felt, he said, I have eaten from everything. I have eaten from everything. And Yaakov, it says, Yeshli Kol, I have everything. So each of our others were blessed with this blessing of Kol. Um, doesn't mean that they had every single thing. It means that they felt that they had, they understood that they had everything that they needed for themselves in that life, uh, in their life. And this is unbelievable, um, un unbelievable um, blessing. I often tell this, um, I was growing up, so um, for those of you who know me well, I'm the only girl and I was um, properly spoiled growing up. Um, I had got everything I wanted except for a Cindy doll. For some reason, my father did not want me to have a Cindy doll. Um, but otherwise, every single thing I wanted, I can't think of a thing that I didn't get. Um, and I had a friend, good friend, 
who um, was also an only daughter, um, and she had everything I had. She was as spoiled as I as I was. Um, and one day I said to her, sure, I'm so spoiled. And she said, you are not spoiled. If you spoiled, then I'm spoiled and I'm not spoiled. <laughs> okay, so um, so what, what was the discussion? It was like such a clear thing to me. Um, I was so secure in that whatever I would ask for and want, I would get. Um, so I felt like I had everything. She wasn't as secure in that. And so she didn't feel like she had everything. And this is the, the what we're striving to reach with, um, with Hashem, that whatever we have, we, we, whatever we need, we need to feel that Hashem has given us everything. Hashem has, Hashem has given us that I'm not, I'm not missing, I'm not missing anything. Um, and more than we want physical things, because as humans, we want physical things. We also want to feel that having physical things in this world is not going to take away from our reward in the world to come. Um, and this is also the concept of I don't want to feel that I'm getting rewarded now um, and it's taking away from my final reward. We're asking Hashem, and here David Amalek is teaching us that it's okay to ask that of Hashem. I want to have a good life, and I also want to have a good after um, afterlife. And we do express that. We express it also in, in um, the benching where we ask Hashem, um, He should give us everything. Chayin, Chesed, Rachamim, right? We carry like we go through all the all the things we want Hashem to give us, and we say um, we want to have Mikolto from all good that he should give it to us forever and ever in other words the good that we're asking for is not only for this world but we're also asking Hashem that he should give us he should reward us in this world and in and in the um, world to come Davina Mela continues over here and he says, he, um, he lays me down in a, a comfortable um, field, and he leads me um, through, he leads me through calm, um, calm waters. Um, and so again, what David Mela is expressing um, expressing over here that um, we trust Hashem completely, that wherever we are, this is where we're going to be comfortable and this is where we need to be. Um, and says that um, a, a true tzaddik always feels as though in the picture David is painting for us, somebody lying in the field, on the, on the meadows, and just being at peace. It says that a true tzaddik feels at peace because even when things are difficult, even when things are hard, they feel at peace because they've reached that level that they believe that whatever is happening, that's what's supposed to be what that's what's supposed to be happening um, right right then. Reb Nachman of Breslov suggests that if a person is feeling unpeaceful, if a person is um, feels that that they're not as calm as they want, that they should get themselves near to a tzaddik. If you are with someone who is relaxed and you're with someone who is peaceful, that will naturally relax you and make you feel peaceful um, peaceful as as well. And so David Hamelach um, continues, and he says, "Nafshi um, he he restores um, calm to my soul, um, and he um, takes me in uh, like um, paths of righteousness for his um, for his sake." Um, so here he's talking again more about the spiritual side. And so we see David Amelech is asking for both, both things, the possible before, asking for physical calmness, physical things, happiness in this world. And this person more talking about nafshi, our souls, that we also need to feel spiritually full, that we also need to feel spiritually calm um, and, and um, come to this understanding that wherever Hashem takes us, He's doing this lema and shemay so that we will be able to fulfill our mission for him, for what he wants us, um, for what he wants us to be um, doing. The commentaries point out that most times in our lives, um, when we're looking for physical and we're looking for spiritual, there's conflict. Um, the, our spiritual self doesn't always want what our physical um, self wants. And our physical self doesn't always want spiritual self. And he says that the fact that David HaMelech puts these two things together, that we can ask Hashem at the same time for physical comforts and ask Hashem at the same time for spiritual um, comforts, tells us that they don't have to be in conflict, that we can enjoy physical things 
and at the same time enjoy um, spiritual things. Um, and this, I think we call this tranquility, when we have our physical needs and we have our spiritual um, needs. Interestingly, Reb Nachman of Breslov says that doing Torah and mitzvahs should bring us to a, um, not only a spiritual tranquility, but should bring us to physical tran tranquility as well. And he points out, he says that if it isn't, then we should be asking why. We should be exploring and asking why, which immediately made me think that, hey, we three weeks to Pesach and who feels physically calm and tranquil about um, getting, ready for, um, getting ready for Pesach? And if we're not feeling physically calm about getting ready for Pesach, then we should be asking ourselves why, okay? And m most of the time, it's our issue. And if we would actually explore it properly um, and figure out what we, ha what we should be doing in order to feel calm, we could probably bring ourselves to much calmer um, space um, by David Amelach's um, suggestion. Um, it's the same concept as Erev Shabbos, right? Shabbos should not bring you um, to stress as you're getting ready for Shabbos. Um, and if it does, we have to stop and ask ourselves why. Why is this, um, why isn't it working? Why is the physical and the, and the spiritual in conflict? Um, our lives, we want the physical and spiritual to go together, um, um, to work together. Pasuk um, Dalad. David says, Even when I'm going in um, the worst, um, the worst dangers and paths of, of the shadow of death, I'm not, af I'm not afraid of bad. Because you Hashem are with me. Your, um, your rod and your walking stick, they both um, comfort me. So the so the first thing even when I'm walking in the most dangerous, difficult times of my life, even when things are not going the way that I would want them, even when I'm afraid. Okay, what does David Hamelach say, say? He says, I don't fear bad. Um, that's what we're working towards. That's one of the difficult um, difficult things that we that we have that we have to work towards. Um, and the Chavis Halavavas explains it says to us that. The more we trust Hashem, the less we fear anything else. Um, and so if we work on our emuna, and this is, this is a hard one, but the more we work on our emuna and the more we trust Hashem, the less scared we'll be of anything else. Um, and so he says, this is where David HaMelech reached at this time, because you remember that David HaMelech did not have a typically tranquil life, right? He was running from, he was running from Shaul and he was running from other enemies and his own son was trying to get him and, and the people were giving him a hard time. David HaMelech didn't have that kind of life that we all yearn for and say, oh, he had this amazing, tranquil, beautiful life. Um, and yet David HaMelech is the one who's able to say that even when I'm running away from Shaul and it looks like there's nowhere to hide and it looks like um, he's gaining on me and it looks like um, there's no food for me to eat and it looks like I might die from sunstroke, I'm not afraid. Why was he not afraid? Because he absolutely, totally believed in Hashem and he believed that Hashem would help him. And what happened? Hashem helped him, right? The, and this is, the Chavis Halavavos explains this, that if we could only work on ourselves to believe absolutely and totally that Hashem will help us, then he will. He will um, absolutely absolutely, and, and totally um, help, um, help us. And it's interesting, he explains, he says, why am I so okay with Hashem? Why, why, is, it a, why is it okay when you're having a hard time to, to believe that Hashem is helping you? Okay, what is it? And he explains that to us with these words, shiftacha umishantacha, your rod, your stick, umishantacha, and your walking stick, okay, heima yinachamuni, they are what um, comforts me. So your rod represents punishments when Hashem um, or not necessarily punishment, but strictness, difficulties, hard hardships. And Mishantacha, your walking stick, is the picture we have in our head is of having something to lean on, right? Having a third leg, like being able to um, be, like being able to to rely um, to rely on Hashem. And David Amelov says actually he understands, he's come to this level of understanding that both the difficult times and the easy times, the strength that we get from Hashem, both of them are the same stick. It's exactly the same stick. The rod and the walking stick is the same. And Hema Yenachamuni, getting either from Hashem, comforts him. It brings him to this level of, of, um, of comfort. 
I was once um, sitting around with a group of ladies and one lady was talking about, she was actually talking about her nursery school, which was very, very, it was a home play school and was very, very successful. And then suddenly um, another play school became very popular and her play school wasn't so popular anymore. And in that year, and she actually got quite tearful about it. She said, I don't know what happened, but my, my nursery school got hardly any children and I can't make ends meet and I had to get rid of staff. And I, I just, I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I did wrong. I don't know why this happened. And Rezi Hecht told us something which always stays in my, my head. She said, one of the things we have to work on is that when we are successful, we blame Hashem. And then when we are not successful, we can also blame Hashem. So if you blame Hashem when you're successful, in other words, you realize that everything comes from him, then when things are not going your way, you can also blame Hashem. You don't have to take like that um, it's my fault. I did something. I did something wrong. And that is what David Amelech is saying over here. He's saying, Shift the home, whether Hashem is giving me a hard time or he's giving me an easy time. Um, I believe both of them come from you, Hashem. But then he asks Hashem, as we all are sitting here and asking, <laughs> asking Hashem, we don't want the rod, okay? We want the walking stick, right? We don't want the difficult times. We want Hashem to support us and to be nice to us. And that's what the next few psukim are David HaMelech actually expressing. So he first asks in, um, in Pasuk K, he says, Tarech lafanai shulchan, set before me a table, neged tzairai, opposite my enemies, dishant of Hashem and Roshi, and anoint uh, my um, oil on my head, and my cup will be over overflowing. So um, first talking about it as a on, a, on a general level, but then making it more personal. Um, when it comes to the Yidden, there are so many times in history that other nations have looked at us and said, the Jews are done, okay? There's no way they can carry on anymore. So like in Egypt, the Jews are done. Whether it was in Spain, the Jews are done. Um, the Holocaust, the Jews are done. And look, here we are, okay? How does how does that happen? So David Amalek says, it's because Hashem sets the table, right? Tarek Lufan, Hashem puts a table up in front of our enemies and he lets them get surprised time after time after time when they think we're done, then suddenly we're there again. Um, we're strong and, and, and we are there. Um, why is that? Says Dishanta Bashem and Roshi, because you have anointed my head with oil. So each one of us, Hashem has given us a mission. We don't know what our mission is, but one of the things that we do know is that we are capable of fulfilling the mission. And how come we are capable of fulfilling it? Because Hashem has anointed us. He didn't give just a general thing. You guys, you Jews, you can you can manage. But Dishanta Bashem and Roshi, my own head, Hashem gave me a mission. He gave each of us a job that has to be done in the world. And we don't know what it is. We just keep plodding on, trying to fulfill our job. I think only Esther Hamalka was given, was told by Mordechai clearly, possibly this is your job, okay? This is this is your mission and why you came into, into the world. But each of us have been anointed to do a specific, um, a specific job. And when we realize that, then all we can do is be grateful. We can realize that Hashem has given us a mission and he's also given us the koyach to fulfill that mission if we want. Um, and David Amalek finishes with, with the um, important words in that passage where he says, Kosi Ravaya, my cup is full. Okay, my cup is overflowing, according to some of the, um, of the translations. Um, so at a, at a simple level, this is David Amalek talking about himself. When he says, Kosi Ravaya, my, my cup is over full. Um, David Amalek was always overflowed with gratitude. He never said to Hashem, whoa, you got trouble to chase me. And then you saved me at the last, um, at the last minute. And Sheikh had been like, don't do that again, Hashem, or whatever. But David Amalek was always grateful for whatever happened. Kaysi Ravaya, his, his, um, his cup felt like it was um, overflowing. Um, and the commentary say to us that if a person feels that their cup is full, um, they will be content, they will be able to have more emunah. A person who feels that their cup is empty or is not full enough, that's when we have trouble. That's when it's difficult to have emunah. That's when it's difficult to fulfill um, to fulfill our, our mission. Um, Rabbi um, Avigdor Miller says, 
how can we have overflowing cups? How can we make sure that all of us have cups that are that are overflowing? And he says there are two things. The one thing is you've got to examine your cup carefully and make sure it hasn't got a hole. If you have a hole in your cup, you can never, ever fill it. Um, and so we have to ask ourselves, is there a hole in my cup? Is there a reason why I'm not satisfied, that I'm not grateful, that I'm not seeing all the brachas that there are in my life? Um, and if there's a hole, we have, to, we have to fix the hole. We have to mend it. And the second way to get your cup to overflow is to keep on putting things in. If you don't put things into your cup, it's also not going to um, overflow. And he says, this is an instruction from David Amalek. When he says, Pesi Ravaya, my cup is overflowing. He's not only speaking about his, like it just happened, his own cup, but that he actively works on it. That he actively makes sure that there's always stuff going into his cup so that it overflows. And David Amalek makes the big request of this, he says, May only good and kindness chase me all the days of my life. And I should be returned to the house of Hashem for, um, for many, um, many um, years. And so what is this concept of only good and kindness um, should chase me? Um, so a lot of different opinion on what this is. So simple explanation, um, good is talking about material, um, sorry, good is talking about spiritual success and chesed is talking about material success. And this is what, we, what David Amalek is asking Hashem, let there be toiv and chesed, um, spiritual success and material um, success. The, the Arachayim says, no, he says toiv is um, it's like that we feel self-enrichment and chesed is when we are kind and good to other people we want to um, help and be good and kind to, to others as well um, and he says these two things that a person should feel um, good themselves that they should feel their own self-enrichment and that they should also feel that they're helping others these two things should um, chase a person this is what David Amalek is asking they should chase us always um, and he tells the, the um, Herakliskin tells the story of a man who was, uh, he was uh, um, comfortable financially, um, and he used to go mad because the Mishalachim were always banging on his, um, on his door. So South Africa didn't have Mishalachim for two years, I think, because of COVID and Baruch Hashem. They're now back. My father told me that when the first one rang his bell um, a few weeks ago, he was ready to make the Baruch Hashem. He said, thank God, the Mishalachim, um, the Mishalachim are back and we have opportunity to give tzedakah in this, um, in this way. Um, so here we have the story of this man who had Mishulachim chasing him and he was getting mad from it. Didn't want to answer the door, didn't want to, um, like how much, how many people are going to come and ask me for, for um, tzedakah? And he told us to the Chafetz Chaim. He said, I like to give tzedakah, I want to give tzedakah, but it's getting a bit much. Wherever I go, there's a Mishulach chasing me. And the Chavot Chaim answered him, he said, this is what David HaMalach meant when he said, that only good and kindness should chase me. He said, some people are chased, God forbid, by illness, and some people are chased by debt collectors, and some people are chased by problems, and you being chased by Mishulachim, that's exactly what David HaMalach was telling, was asking Hashem, that only good things, positive things, should be the, the um, things that, that chase us. Um, in Chassidus, it explains to us that Hashem is good, and therefore everything that Hashem does is good. And yet we physical people don't always feel that everything that Hashem does is good. And we don't understand that everything that Hashem um, does is good, if we understand it at an intellectual level, not always at a practical level. And interesting that David Amalek says to us, how should we ask Hashem to give us things in the world? We should say, the good that you give us should be kind good. Um, we know, Hashem, that everything that you, that you do is, is good, but we don't want all of your good. What kind of good do we want? Chesed good. We want the kind of good that we can understand. I once heard Rabbi Kesselman explain it. He said, everything is good, but we want good that has, you don't have to put explanations on it. No more fortune, just straight, obvious, um, obvious good. 
And David Amalek says, we are entitled to ask for that. What kind of good do we want is good that we understand. It's a similar idea to um, Rosh Hashanah where we wish Hashanah Teva Umasuka that that should be a year that's good and sweet. Um, of course, it's going to be a year that's good because Hashem only does good, but we don't necessarily want the good that Hashem is going to do unless it's sweet. Shana Teva Umasuka, good and a sweet, um, a sweet year. And then the biggest request that David Amalek makes, he says, Hashem, you know, we really want, and that will solve all issues and all problems and will make us feel completely tranquil in this world and next will never, is that the Shafti Bevais Hashem, that you should um, return me to the house of Hashem, in other words. Give us a base of Megdash, bring us Mashiach, um, take away tears, take away difficulties, um, and that should be the Erech Yamim. It should be um, for long and good and healthy years. And that is a, as I said to you from the start, a touch of the depth of this um, parak of, of Tehillim. So.